Hey everybody, welcome to Lead Like You Mean It. I'm so glad you've joined me today for this weekly conversation we have about life, we have about leadership, we have about influence, what it takes to really live the life God has created us to live, and uh, just uh, so happy to have these conversations with you. So hey, I want you to do something real quick, or just from the from the very beginning, get a hold of somebody, tell them about this broadcast, and tell them how they can be part of this uh, just community of people that are chasing the life God wants them to live, and I'm honored to be able to just be a mentor to you, come alongside and help you on your journey of life, journey of leadership. So let's dig in today. What do you say? We talked last week about planning your life one week at a time, and I hope you incorporated some of the principles that I talked about as far as what that looks like. Uh, so the question is, we are really looking at how do we know what is important to us? You know, because I talked to you last week about making sure that you schedule your priorities. You cannot let other people schedule your priorities. You have to determine what they are. And that's what we need to be able to look at what is really important to us in life. Now, there's two things that are going to set you apart. Number one, the ability to think ahead. Listen, we are living in a generation of people that don't know how to think, okay? We've got a people, we've got a generation of people, they let social media think for them, they let the news think for them, they let their friends think for them. The thing that's going to set you apart as a leader is the ability to think ahead and to really think clearly through the choices that you make, the decisions that you make, and the ramifications of those choices. Let me give you some example of quotes from people that prove that we're living in a generation of people that really don't know how to think. Jason Kidd, a basketball player, he was drafted uh, by into the NBA. This is what he said. Think about this. He said, we're going to turn this team around 360 degrees. Well, Jason, that means you're going to end up the exact same place you are right now. 360 degrees is a complete circle. Uh, Marion Barry was the, the, the mayor of Washington, D.C. When he was mayor, he made this crazy quote about crime. He said this. He said, outside of the killings, Washington, D.C. has one of the lowest crime rates in the country. <laughs> That's dumb. That's a dumb statement. A question was given to one of the uh, Miss USA pageant, uh, pageant uh, participants. The question was, if you could live forever, would you and why? This was her answer. I would not live forever because we should not live forever. Because if we were supposed to live forever, then we could live forever. But we cannot live forever, which is why I would not live forever. What a crazy statement. I mean, I give those to you because people really don't think. And they don't think through what they're saying. They don't think through what they're doing. If you want to be set apart, you've got to have the ability to think ahead because your level of thinking is in direct proportion to your level of achievement in life. And the higher level at which you think, the higher level of achievement you're going to rise to in life. And that's why the Bible said in Philippians 4, whatever things are true and noble and just and pure and lovely and good report, if there's virtue, if there's praise, think on these things. The Bible talks a lot about your ability to think. So number one, look at your, look at your, your thought process. Look at your willingness to think ahead. The second thing that's going to set you apart is the ability to prioritize your responsibility. What are the priorities of your life? What is important to you? What are you responsible for? And if you can do those two things, you're going to be set apart basically from 90% of the people that are around you. Because success basically is just a predetermined realization of what has to happen in order for you to be successful. You've got to prioritize. So when it comes to your life, the willingness that you have to think ahead and the willingness to prioritize is going to set you apart. Now, let me give you a principle about priorities. There's something called the 80-20 rule or the 80-20 principle, the Pareto principle. Basically, back in the early 1900s, there was an Italian economist by the name of Vilfredo Pareto. And he created this mathematical formula describing the unequal distribution of wealth that he observed and measured in his country. And basically what it means is 20% of your priorities are going to yield 80% of your results. In other words, it's the very few things that you do well that are going to make you the most productive. 
And this is where most people miss it. They don't identify what they do well. They try to do everything well. They try to do everything that comes across their email, everything that comes across their desk, instead of identifying that there's only 20% of the things that they should really be focusing 80% of their time on. There's, let me give you some examples. Uh, in time, 20% of the time produces 80% of your results. If you're a counselor, 20% of the people take up 80% of the time. If you've got maybe a presentation that you have to make, 20% of the content is going to produce 80% of the impact. I found in church ministry as a pastor, 20% of the people give 80% of the donations. And while we're talking about churches, I came from a background, we had a lot of potlucks. I found that 20% of the people eat 80% of the food at a church potluck. I mean, the deal is you've got to be, you've got to simplify. You've got to keep it very simple. So the pressing question you've got to answer, your, answer to yourself is this, what are the 20% of priorities in my life that produce the results that I need? Who are the 20% of the people in my life that I need to spend more time with because they're bringing 80% of the influence in my life? Identify that 20%. And when you can accurately answer that question, then when you go to planning out your life, you need to block out on your calendar the 20% of activities that bring 80% of the results. For me, if you were to look at my calendar, the three things that are important to me is number one, preparation, number two, influence with people, and um, number three, just simply writing. And so if you were to look at my calendar, you're going to see that 80% of my time is either spent preparing for lessons and sermons, meeting with people, or writing devotionals. You're going to find that's the three main things that I do well. I don't do very many things well. And so therefore, I've got to look at what I do well and put that on my calendar. The question is when it comes to projects, not what, we're, what, what will my calendar be full, but rather what will fill my calendar. When it comes to people, the question is well, not, not will I see people, but rather who will I see. In other words, you decide what fills your calendar. You decide what you work on. You decide who you meet with because leaders initiate. Followers react, but leaders initiate. I love this by John Maxwell. He kind of gives us a comparison between leaders and followers. First of all, he said leaders, they're the ones that pick up the phone and make the contact, but followers are the ones that wait for the phone to ring. He said leaders spend time planning, anticipating problems, while followers spend time living day to day, reacting to problems. Leaders invest time with people. Followers just spend time with people. Leaders fill the calendar by priorities, and followers, they fill the calendar by requests. Listen, here's the deal. This is what I've learned. If you don't choose what fills your calendar, it's going to be filled for you. If you don't choose your priorities, you're going to end up living life by somebody else's priorities. If you don't choose who you meet with, other people are going to demand your time with these, got, quote, got a minute meetings. And so the key is you've got to identify, and this is what I want you to work on. Look at your life, look at your career, look at your personal life. What are the, what are the, the, the very few things that you can do and do them well and invest the time in doing that 20% doing those very few things well. When you do that, you've chosen to live life by your priorities. So the two things I want you to work on, number one, work on your thinking this week. Make sure that you're thinking ahead, planning ahead. Number two, live life by the 20%. Identify the few things, schedule them into your calendar. And when you do that, I believe you're gonna live a life that is well-lived and you're gonna be able to be happy and satisfied with the production that you have put forth. So listen, thank you so much. Listen, again, put some comments down. I want to know how this is helping you. If there's questions that you have, topics maybe that we should cover on this broadcast, I want you to let me know. Write those things down. We're going to cover them the best that we possibly can and make sure that you spend some time uh, investing in planning, thinking, prioritizing so that you can truly live the life you were created to live. So have a great week, everybody. I'll see you right back here next Wednesday, 12 noon. Join me and bring somebody with you. Take care.